All right, so today is the day I'm gonna take the Nike Joyrides for a spin and cut these bad boys in half. I wanna see what is inside of here and just, I guess, experience this with you guys. So we're gonna explore a little bit in this video. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, so once was is no more. This is the results of the hack job as you can see here. So here is a look at the upper just for those who wanted to see. Neoprene tongue, reinforcement. And the reinforcement's actually pretty good. It goes all the way through. Look at the collar. You have the little joyride button right here. And the little foam even on the back right here. It looks like a pillow foam right here, nothing fancy. And our little friendship bracelet. BFF forever. Maybe I could still wear it as a friendship bracelet. What do you guys think? Look good. But this is where it gets really interesting. As you can see, I took the joyride and cut it up here. Kind of funny on the bottom of this one, it actually has 
a thing that says Joyride on it. And so oddly enough, this is what you're walking on. So this is exactly what I pictured in a roundabout way. This is what it felt like on your foot. And it's like a little sack right here. It's almost like one of those little sandbag things that you squeeze for stress like this. You know what I mean? That's kind of what it looks like. Look at this thing. They're just little beads underneath here. And the beads are kind of crazy. They're really lightweight. They're very flexible. Um, and if you go like this, it does feel like responsive. So it is something about this tech that makes it kind of good, but it's also something very weird. It's like they jammed so many bees in here that you can't help but feel odd when you put them on your feet. It's not like they're crazy uncomfortable, but it is something you have to get used to mostly because it's not all the way over your foot. So part of me thinks that it would actually be a better ride if they took the beads and put it over the entire thing, or at least didn't press down and have four different pod sections. If it felt more singular on your foot, it would be a lot better than having four little pods. But the pods actually are a bit responsive. So you could see right here, again, I'm gonna push down here like this. And then on this side, you could see what it does on the bottom. I mean, it's just soft and squishy for sure. I do have a feeling that this is gonna be one of those technologies that is kind of a fad. It's not gonna really last. This is more of a gimmicky type of technology that's fun for kids to see. Part of the reason why I think that they started off uh, developing these in men's, women's, and kid sizes, all three at the same time, is because it's probably not supposed to be that serious of a tech. Uh, it is cool. I mean, it's interesting. It's different. There is a look right here at it cut open. And it's such a bizarre looking innard right here where all the balls usually lie in right here. And the way that they case it, it's odd because you do have a column right here, as you could see on this side, to uh, help with the support. So it's not like a crazy bean bag that you just slide all the way in. So they have that support column and you can see they have more support around the backside here. So I think that that's probably a smart move, but it's really, it's just weird. Leave some comments in the comment section. What do you guys think? Uh, have you tried them out? Do you think they're comfortable or not? Is it something you think will have a break-in period? That's I think what most people want to know, including myself, which is why I kept my second pair, as you could see here, so I can wear these for a month and see if I break them in and how it feels after that month time frame. But in the meantime, you can see what was inside it from this video. Hopefully this was informative to you guys. And hopefully um, you guys liked the video. And if you did, please hit the thumbs up button. Share the video if you guys would like, because it cost me at least $180 uh, for this pair right here that I lost. I wonder if I can just go to Nike and return them like this and be like, dudes, I don't know what happened to my other shoe. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my other shoe, but something happened here. It's like not working. It's not working right. Um, I wonder what they would do, but I would have cut the other one open, but honestly, there was just literally no point because this one was already, uh, destroyed. And I thought about cutting it this way open, but then I thought this would be more fun uh, the way I did it. And it actually worked out the best. So I'm glad I did this way because I still have the other ones intact. I could do a little surgery and pull these out. But here's a little test. You can see the little balls. Watch how crazy bouncy these are. It's pretty crazy how bouncy these little balls are, but at the end of the day, it does feel a bit gimmicky. And I guess we'll see over time if they are comfortable or would they be better off just molding all of these together like Boost does and then having a actual unit so it's less messy. I mean, I mentioned it in my unboxing video, but can you imagine if you're a kid and you wore these down to the bone and you're leaking little rubbery beads everywhere? I mean, it would be ridiculous. And it, it's a huge mess and it's not easy to clean up. So I think that would be kind of a risk. Uh, I could see that being a problem for Nike in the long run. So maybe they should actually form all the beads together, have it join together and call it not boost, maybe not bounce, that's chosen too. I don't know, what would they call it? If they put them all together, what would it be called? Leave a comment, let me know. But that's the video. Hopefully, again, you liked it. Like the video if you did. And have a great rest of the day. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Notification bell to be notified when the videos go live. And we will see you guys for some more videos soon. Peace, guys.